Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rusty wants to give us his take on uh, actor, producer, director Tyler Perry. Okay. All right. Tyler Perry is a closeted homosexual. Now I say this because if I remember this interview correctly, he was on Oprah and uh, he was talking about how he was uh, raped when he was younger and then also raped when he was older by a guy. Like he, it, it maybe like two or three times he's been <laughs> raped. This is a terrible way to start out. A- <laughs> Man, that's pretty unlucky. I mean, even once is like, it's pretty bad that luck, but I mean, you know, you, you get out of it, you know, you're like, boom, all right, light speed ahead. Nothing's going to stop us. All of a right. sudden, next thing you know, there's something in your ass. Yeah, you're you're a twenty something year old man. Uh, just somehow keep falling into this position where you men are having sex with you. So, I mean, do you also think like these men religious. would dress him up as a girl, and that's why he wanted to play the Medea character thirteen times on the big screen? Mm. That's Hollywood. Hollywood always tries to uh, take all black men and put them in dresses and demasculate them or emasculate them. At least that's what I hear from like black actors and comedians. I mean, yeah, uh, black uh, rappers are getting gayer and gayer as the decades move on. So you might be right. They're, yeah, the water is making the frogs gay and the the homies as well. <laughs> oh my god, man! The the water. Uh, that's all. Have I've you guys seen the clips it. of the water in Ohio? Holy yeah. fuck! Hold yep. up, uh, most average water in Ohio, Scully emoji. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so only in Ohio. Um, so, Rusty and Aggie, the question I want to ask you on this new edition of Trash Rats International, which, hey, welcome back, everybody. We're still doing it. The, the, the only show that will give you guillotine updates, the only podcast that has both Aggie uh, and Rusty and me, all both of yep. us. You know what this reminds me of? I'll just say this real quick. So um, I was at the lunch table at work a couple days ago, and I pull out my phone on Instagram to just scroll a little bit on my lunch break, and uh, Rusty's latest post about the guillotine comes up, and I was like, hey, remember that guy who I put down on my application uh, as a reference for my job? And my boss <laughs> is like, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, this is him, and it's the picture of Rusty <laughs> with his head in, in the thing. I'm like, yeah, you know, uh, Mr. I ain't gonna say, but you know, Mr. Cage, yeah, this is him right here. This is his, This is what he does for a living. And my boss just kind of looks at it, and he kind of, like, he's eating something. He kind of, like, swirls his tongue around his teeth, like, with his mouth closed. And he's kind of <laughs> has this concentrated stare, but kind of, like, just empty at the same time. He's like, huh. And that's so, it. So, uh, you had me, you wanted me to be, like, a reference. Like, I had previously hired you somewhere, right? Yeah, I think, you, I, think I said you were my grocery store manager or something when I lived in, <laughs> uh in the boonies i mean technically you guys have worked together so you didn't have to lie about why yeah i, I was actually kind of really worried about that phone call because I, I don't think i end up taking it so i'm glad you got that job uh, um, anyways uh let's let's just say we definitely did work together because my boss is gonna watch this probably oh so, gosh um, <laughs> that's what i'm saying so like you guys have worked in a professional uh, <laughs> setting before you know you might be ashamed of the the work that was produced but that's better than lying about the grocery store Hey, you know what? Rusty was an integral part of intoxicated quesadilla review, wherever that was that we hit that taco truck. <laughs> yeah. Or that weird Snapchat you sent me that I uploaded to Monkey Mafioso of like, you're anonymously, or you're recording Rusty from across the street and he's like making some really weird faces. And I never got the story on what was going on. Was he doing an impression or was he stroking out? Wait, I don't think I even know about this. Oh, okay, I'm going to have to, f- I'll find the clip and post it in the chat. Okay. Yeah, it's a weird one. Yeah. I think I just wanted, you know, people to know that we're going to go get some food and have a good time or whatever. But you were like, I think it was because it was a full moon. You were activating and turning into a werewolf. Yeah, you're doing so, it's pretty freaky. It's like Rusty. found footage. <laughs> it's like Sas- the Sasquatch of Florida. Uh, this is from nine months ago. I uploaded it. I called it when the edible hits and it has 477 <laughs> views. <laughs> and I guess I'll put this in the right podcast. Now. I'm posting it in the chat. Okay, uh, all right. okay. Rusty, tell me if you remember this and uh, what was going on. I'm, all right, uh, let's see. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, I can almost hear the noises. I, I might have been doing an Emperor Lemon impression. <laughs> you know, like the, the, uh, the, the autistic retarded Emperor Lemon impression. So just the I, everyday normal emp? 
Um, 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 will. Um. Wait, I, think I, I think that's what I was doing, but I'm not sure. I'm saying it was the full moon. That's why the full moon was included in the clip. And you, you got your jaw kind of jutting out a little bit. It kind of looks like a werewolf transformation. So that's what I'm going to go with. It's been, it's been like a year. I'm a little rusty on it, no pun intended. But whatever it was, I think it had to do with that. Yeah, that was after Crater Clash? Like after the parties? or, or uh... I think it was Friday night. I don't think that was... I think it was Friday night. Cause that we could have been to, any uh... day in Rusty's life. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we went to the, the compound on Saturday. Right, true, true. Yeah, I, I mean, I was probably still very wasted at that point <laughs> in the morning <laughs> all right well good to know well rusty you've been awake for about an hour so far today and it's at 6 uh, p.m how many shots in are you oh well all right so i have started waking up earlier um 4 p.m so no like 12 i've been i've been walking more i've been trying to you know get in my ten thousand steps a day oh good uh just so i can potentially lose some gut fat or uh you know get my circulation going but to answer your question i'm two shots in oh good okay it's, it's 7 p.m here hopefully you'll get another one during this episode oh i'm sure uh so how's yeah. the guillotine coming along it, it's it's coming along um that's pretty much all i do all day is work on that and uh at this point it's uh, you know it, it's mostly all together i was working on making a new mount today i got like a custom extra weight so like the blade and the mount and the weight um the the blade mount and the weight it's all together probably around like it's got to be somewhere around 60 pounds i think which hopefully that's enough to be effective dropping from the large distance well i saw that I you got the dummy pros or like it, it has the the mesh on it that makes it as durable as like an actual human neck. Have you done the test yet? It's supposed to be ninety eight percent accurate, but I haven't got in the mail yet, and I'm kind of worried about it because I wanted this for the next video, the one I'm working on now. But it takes like it takes like fucking five six weeks to ship, and I haven't got an update yet. So I think that's going to be the thing that's going to hold it back. How much does something video. like that cost? Three hundred dollars. Oh, that, that's a lot cheaper than I was thinking, actually. Well, it's only the bust, so the the full size ones they're like three thousand dollars. So I got the cheapest one I could. I think it'll be effective. I just to do a proof of concept. I want to show that it it works. But um, right now it's about maybe like eighty to eighty five percent complete as a functioning full size functioning twenty foot tall guillotine. Um, once I make sure it all works, then I'm going to pretty it up and, you know, like paint it and put some nice coats on there. And what is, what do you, I mean, you finished the series, three or four episodes down the line from now, I assume, if you're 80% done. Uh, and then what? You just live with this guillotine for the rest of your life? I don't know, actually. Um, you're just going to keep it? Yeah, why not? I mean, it's you spent be like over a year building this horrible contraption in your backyard and it's ginormous like what are you gonna do with it i well I, I feel like the answer will manifest itself um when the time comes when the it hoa comes sense. knocking yeah well who knows i mean i'm i am waiting for something like that to occur but <laughs> i bet you're desperately hoping it will happen just for the clickbait the hoa be... tries to cut down my guillotine or my lemonade stand is too edgy for the you know something like that I don't have an HOA, thankfully, but uh, it is funny because at this point, I don't remember where it was last time that we talked, but at this point, you can definitely see it from the road. Oh, my God. So if people are well, walking, if they're walking in the neighborhood, just like jogging or doing whatever, they can look over the fence and see clearly what is a <laughs> 20 foot tall guillotine. Uh, you're making sure to uh, put up some kind of signage as to not intimidate your local uh, jogging neighbors that you wouldn't, you know, want them to be afraid of a giant 20 foot guillotine in your backyard, I'm sure. Yeah, especially yeah, I, the ones of the darker complexion. Well, I don't know, those those Floridians, they get a lot of tans. You yeah. Know, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> but maybe now that Susan Mojiki is stepping down as CEO from YouTube, we have, uh, you know, our good friend, uh, the guy with the big Reese's mug from Net Neutrality. I forget what his name is, but he's going to be the new CEO. Oh, Maybe Apu, he'll be, he's uh, taking over? Yeah. He, you know, he sold off the Quickie, wart, the quickie Marts to, uh, <laughs> you know, the yellow man. <clears throat> and now he's about to, you know, change it up. And I think he's going to be able to re-monetize all guillotine content. So I think once it's all polished and ready to go, 
you know, you had that uh, molten lava ball, you had like the 10,000 pound hammer or whatever, the 10,000 degree knife, all that's old school, it's way outdated, nobody cares about that. We want the 10,000 degree guillotine blade, <laughs> dropping out a whole lot of things, and I think it's going to make a lot of money. I mean, all right, so there was a channel that had made a guillotine, and they, when they completed it, they, they didn't even show it operating, they... Uh, shifted everyone over to a new channel called like something like the guillotine channel and uh, they only made four or seven something like between four or seven videos and they just completely stopped and they were just cutting a bunch of spaghetti and random other shit yeah it's almost like this concept has so few good video ideas that it's capable of just having something that cuts things <laughs> well but i mean it hasn't well, stopped you for 12 years i guess what's surprised me is that this project which started out as a joke uh as all good projects do sure is now becoming it's like gaining the um the attention and support of people from all different political spectrums and walks <laughs> of life in America because everyone is horrifically frustrated uh and they don't really know you know who to point their frustrations at it's it's funny because I had a few of these clips kind of go uh, semi-viral on like Twitter or sorry, not on Twitter, on a uh, TikTok and Instagram. And I'm reading through the comments and uh, they're all just like, they're like, oh, I hope this is for Joe Biden. Oh, I hope this is for Trump. Oh, I hope this is for the left. It's like, I can't tell if this guy is far left or far right. Like you and all your commie friends or I don't know. It's everyone's got an opinion and there's no consensus on who someone would want a a lemonade stand for because i gotta you gotta remember this is only a lemonade stand are you going well, you to know. try to uh uh fence it like philip defranco and all your future guillotine videos so that th they will appeal to uh the, the guillotine can symbolize the death of anybody on earth and everybody watching can feel represented right yeah i'll um god i don't really know how much you can even do with this without easily just getting kicked off of YouTube. But because if I'm decapitating a ballistics dummy, that should be fine because people shoot them all the time. Yeah. But then it's like you can't have blood in it. I don't know. I, Says who? I'm not really sure. I, everyone I was asking was like, I would not put realistic blood. So I might try to do something with fake blood. Just ketchup bottles and like have them in frame, squeezing the blood out onto whatever. Fuck, why not? Yeah. Like, we know it's fake. It's funny. So that water in Ohio, how close are y'all to any of these places? I, I know that this is happening all over the world. There's, like, chemical factories burning down, a shit ton of train derailments, and essentially, like, the air and water all around the country seems like it's being poisoned all at once. Mm-hmm. Are, uh, are you in any threat of the Ohio East Palestine trail train derailment. So Aggie and I are west of Ohio. And from what I've seen, like the toxic uh, clouds have been blowing over Canada, more uh, northeastern from Ohio. So really, whoever the EPA d uh, disaster terrorists, whoever's trying to do this to prove their point and uh, fuck us all over, uh, really, they're fucking over Canada too a lot of it it's blown over there and those people are suffering so that's uh slightly funny okay i, I guess i can kind of support that yeah i saw it was hitting the uh the east coast pretty hard or at least they were saying like in new york and areas around there um their air quality had dropped considerably and it's probably because the winds were blowing it in that direction so well the thing for me was, you know, they said, oh, it's going to, I guess the Ohio River uh, connects with the Mississippi River at some point, And I'm mm -hmm. kind of close to that. So I was like, oh, but then I thought for a second, I'm like, oh, wait, no, I'm up here. The Mississippi River starts like up northern Minnesota. So I'm closer to like where it starts. So basically, I could still go out and go swimming, uh, you know, near where I live. And I won't have to worry about, well, I mean, there's already a whole lot of garbage in the river anyway. But no, no, no more new garbage, no vinyl chloride or whatever it is. My skin's yeah. not going to start bubbling like Pop Rocks when I take a shower any more so than it already does. <laughs> so basically, you know, I bought about 300 gallons of treated water uh, last week just in case. Uh, but otherwise, I'm doing all right. Where'd you get that at and how are you storing it? I have uh, five gallon jugs of reverse osmosis water. They're like these kind of... Uh, <clears throat> 
the shape of them. They're not very good. At, these ones aren't very good at stacking, but I just happened to, okay. uh, you know, over the last year or whatever, as I was planning to move down to Sneedville, Tennessee, once I saved up enough money from my uh, menial uh, hard labor job that I've been working, uh, you know, I kind of cleaned up and threw away about 90% of my belongings because I realized that they had absolutely no value whatsoever, and I was just holding on to scraps of paper and various garbage uh, <clears throat> to replace the void left in my soul from a <laughs> decaying society. So then I happened to have some spare room in my basement layer to, uh, you know, restock. And I'd eaten through my COVID uh, rations from 2020 as well. So it kind of was like, oh, hey, it's the new thing. It's been a few years. We got the new thing now. This empty space, time to load it up with more shit that'll probably just sit here because... <laughs> But it is what it is. Yeah, I wonder about with water storage, um, what's the best way to store it? Because it, I feel like it would go bad if it wasn't properly, I don't know, uh, put in the, the correct container. I don't, I'm don't. i not really sure about water storage, but I guess I have to start looking into it because, you know, in about an hour and a half away, there was like a five-acre chemical uh, factory burned down in Kissimmee mm. uh, in Florida. And... I don't really know what that means for me here. All right, here's one thing I'll say. Someone brought up the idea that, you know, we're hearing about all this stuff all happening at once, and it feels like an attack. But it's quite possible that this stuff happens all the time anyways, and now all the attention just happens to be on it. So it seems like it's happening in, happening in uh, unnormal abundance right well i i think there's a lot to unpack and there there is a lot of things happening all at once so i think we should maybe take a step back from just this ohio thing and really evaluate what is happening all around the country and really this started with uh these fucking chinese balloons that uh right. evidently are not ufos and they're not dangerous but we do need to get missiles and shoot them out of the sky and there have been like several of them and then suddenly trains with toxic dangerous chemicals for the environment are all derailing like day after day after day and the uh we're not sending any real aid to uh ohio and there's That's all these insane. videos of just the water if you like touch the water it becomes a fucking rainbow like horrifically <laughs> like all the all the fish are just dead and like Aki was saying it's going to enter the river and just the entire river system that people rely on for fishing and all that it's just going to be fucked like the environment is so incredibly fucked and Joe Biden just sent another half a billion to Ukraine today so yeah and the EPA says that um that it's all safe the water and the air is safe everyone can go back home so fuck the EPA and then also was it the CDC that just 11 days before the wreck or it might have been longer than that changed the um the amount of vinyl chloride that can be in water or air uh and still be considered safe they they completely raised it up which is very very suspicious so it's <laughs> yeah it hadn't it been changed be in 17 years i heard and all of a sudden yeah, yeah just immediately preceding this completely coincidental train derailment they uh increased it by like a thousand times as far right. as like what's considered a healthy level to consume and yeah, meanwhile and on the other side of the world putin has pretty much said like we're going for world war three baby like i'm not quitting and china said that they're backing russia in the conflict God. so and now we're, they're sending chinese balloons that we're shooting out of the sky this the cold war two has started and russia and china are fucking coming for us right now you can't say it's a coincidence that all this shit is happening. Maybe I'm Alex fuck, Jones man. right now, but fuck. Dude, who isn't Alex Jones right now? The idea of conspiracy theories have completely fucking I, uh, warped and mutated. I mean, it was all, all laughable, and it was like a mocking term, conspiracy theory, and it was something just to shut down an argument. I don't think anyone thinks about conspiracy theories in like a mocking tone anymore. It's got to be, unless you're a fucking complete normie and you're not paying attention to the news and you're just still like norming out, norming out and talking about, oh, there's UFOs in Alaska, which is the diversion. Uh, what is it, like a $400,000 missile to shoot down what was <laughs> like found to be like a hobbyist uh, balloon hmm. or some shit like that. Well, speaking uh, well, of things being a diversion, and sorry, Eggy, but this is very important. I've also seen okay. that 
the list of Jeffrey Epstein's clients is going to be released very soon, and that perhaps right. all of this shit is the cover up to keep like the media focused on something else. Convenient cover up for sure. I'm not sure if this is because no one's really. I don't know if the mainstream media is talking about um, any of the chemical stuff. They they definitely were going ham on the UFOs, which <laughs> that should be a red flag. When you see like CNN just talking about UFOs, UFOs, and it's like, all right. Uh, fuck that. You can cross that story off as nonsense. Okay, so maybe that the UFO stuff is the cover up for the environmental disaster that, that they are ignoring. And that itself, even though it actually did happen, was an intentional thing to cover up <laughs> the Epstein news. So we've got cover ups on cover ups of real, real and real things uh, being right. ignored by the, a fake story. What I can say, as someone who has to be out in the normiosphere at this time, and they have the the news on in the office uh, every so often, they might switch between sports, whatever's going on. But I can tell you that at least in the last couple of days, it actually, the chemical spill was making the mainstream news channels, the mainstream cable Good. news, and uh, it was being spoken on, so... I think that maybe it was enough pressure applied by grassroots individuals Good, who yeah. you know made it so that they couldn't be ignored and that it did have to be addressed. And I, I am a, a lib cuck enough to still watch the John Oliver HBO show, and he did a big segment on it uh, last okay. night. All right, good. Well, yeah, because I was I was worried about that um, for a while. I was like, no one was talking about. It. I asked some some friends like. What do you think about, you know, East Palestine train derailment? They're like, I have no idea. I'm like, holy shit. You know, this is like two weeks in the in the making. And it is um, very inconvenient that it's called East Palestine because <laughs> like we've been trained as Americans to assume any disaster in Palestine is like a good thing that we should be celebrating. So now yeah, we're expected I thought, to care. I thought Israel did it. Yeah, it's like, oh, fuck. I mean, East Palestine, you know, they're probably not as good as the West. Fuck them. <laughs> but then it says Ohio and then I get really confused. So if you had to guess, if you had to theorize, what do you think all this means? Do you think that it is a uh, the cover up for Epstein, which that seems a little far fetched because that's a this is a lot of fucking work or. Mm, well, um, think, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure the people in office are going to be on that list. So, right. <laughs> oh, man, I well, can't wait for that list to come out. Should we do our predictions right now? Because by the time we do another Trash Rats, the list that has been promised will be out Uh I'm guessing it's going to be 99% redacted and they're going to throw some Hollywood celebrities like Epstein or not Epstein, not uh, Weinstein under the bus. But uh, should we do some predictions here? Official trash rat predictions. Who will be on the official Epstein list? So are these ones that have already not been released? Yeah, you can't do Matt a... Groening and you, you can't do Bill like Clinton. Yeah. Shit. All right. Who else? Because I, I know when the official list comes out, Bill Gates is really trying to make sure that he is <laughs> not on it, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of set in stone. He's been grilled on it on national television several times. Who else? I I really can't even think. I mean, they say someone really high up in office. We already know Trump did. We already know Bill Clinton. I mean, what, Joe what Biden is the obvious answer, and Hunter yeah, Biden right. too. Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Hunter Biden, um, Zelensky. I don't know how the fuck they <laughs> do that. Yeah, and Zelensky was a fucking actor before he became president. Like, those are the two most pedo fucking uh, professions <laughs> out there. Double dip and no pun intended, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so, I, I'm is, really uh, Rusty sure. Cade says that the leader of the Ukraine movement is a pedo. <laughs> Man building 20-foot guillotine on YouTube, <laughs> quote. <laughs> <laughs> Well, isn't it weird, though? I mean, it's hard to make a prediction, but it, at this point, any name I hear just in theory, I believe. Because it's like everyone's involved. What about Weird Al Yankovic? I would not believe God, that, that one. Would suck. I wouldn't believe that it. Would be, that would be kind of funny, though. I mean, what would Weird Al be like at uh, Epstein's Island? The kids wouldn't even I'll get say. the references he's making. They're like, <laughs> I Love Lucy, what the fuck is that? <laughs> Epstein brought him out there just because he loved his music that much, you know. Like there, he he was out in like the fake front area, no trap doors, no mm. secret exit or entrance or whatever. He was just performing, having a good time. He had all his Hollywood friends there, all the politicians were there. He thought it was a nice, joyous occasion. He walks out, all of a sudden the whole walls flip around. Uh -oh. There's some whacked out stuff going on. You know, they're trying to set him up. I don't know. He's he's too good for this for this industry. And Al yeah, says, "Man, I thought I was weird." 
<laughs> he sees all the pedos as he's as he's playing his accordion and the in his mouth. Bill Gates oh, has man. a giant forked tongue wrapping around children in front of him. <laughs> I'm buying all the farmland. Dude, Bill Gates is fu- like we're all fucked, but like irreparable damage to his image. Um, man, and these are the people that we still are, are allowing to be in charge. Yeah, there's nothing we can do about it. It's like they're just waving all these things in our face. Like, what are you going to do? I feel like that. I feel like that's what's going to happen. It's all going to come out, and then they're just going to say fucking whatever. Oh, oh, here's my prediction. Justin Trudeau, he's going to have gone there for sure. In blackface? Uh, yeah, probably. That's probably where those pictures Plausible are deniability. You know, the white man trying to blame the brothers once again, just as I suspected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think they, they are just going to say, like, Yep, that's what that's the reality of your situation. We're all satanic pedophiles and we're bombing her and poisoning our own people in order to make you reliant on our uh our food sources and our water supplies. So now you have to buy all your water from Nestle and uh Coca-Cola and Pepsi who now own all the clean wells and the clean streams and uh Go ahead, collect as much rainwater as you want. There's acid rain and there's forever yeah. chemicals in it. So, you know, fuck off and do that. And even hey, after they announce all of their evil deeds, 90% of people will still rather just go, like, bitch about transgender people on Twitter and, like, boycott a fucking wizard video game. Like, that's where the people are focusing their attention. Yeah, go on Facebook and look at some of your fucking friends and the shit they're talking about. They're talking about, like criticism uh anti-criticism against the last of us show like oh you didn't like it because they made the guys gay who gives a fuck <laughs> who gives a fuck of if whether or not velma is good or not or the last of us well is, i'll have you know velma is great we reviewed every episode and we loved it rusty <laughs> I, I couldn't watch too much of it but uh, all right all right so I, i'll give it another shot oh yeah you should just you know get super drunk tonight and binge all of velma i think you'll have an enlightening experience and so what and it, now I'm like the conspiracies are just going crazy in my fucking head. Um, there was the chicken shit, <laughs> chicken shit, um, the chicken farms that were burning down and, you know, the price of eggs are going up. And then I, I bet reactor of, uh, is laughing his way all the way to the bank. You know, all those chicken eggs he's getting for free. Here's what I think is going to happen. With the, uh, I saw this a lot on TikTok. I didn't know the, the full reality of it. Chickens often stop laying eggs in cold weather but you can set up you know uh their coop in a way that still allows them to be productive and to lay eggs but a lot of people were reporting that their chickens all stopped laying eggs and so then they they were saying when we switched the feed from the normal feed we were buying they all started laying eggs again and this feed is produced by the same people who are you know providing the eggs on like the national scale so i think that they're trying to breed out uh, chicken's abilities to lay eggs, at least in like common breeds, or by providing all the chicken feed that people buy, something in it that causes the chickens to stop laying eggs so that you have to rely on them to get eggs. And you can't just have chickens in your backyard. You'll get a species of chicken that can't lay eggs, and they have all the chickens that can lay eggs. And I, I don't know. I, I think that's something that's going to happen. So... Well, what you just explained, uh, a whole new conspiracy popped into my head, guys. Tell me what you think of this. Recent months, we've had these fucking environmental terrorists, and they're like, okay, I'm going to take some tomato juice, and I'm going to throw it at this famous painting. Surely Mm. people will respect us now. Now we will save the environment. Uh Uh-oh, didn't work. The entire internet laughed at them, mocked them. (laughs) Uh, It's time for phase two, environmental terrorism. Uh, we're vegans and we're, uh, we want to protect the environment, so we're going to stop the ability for people to even eat chicken eggs at all. We're going to burn down all the farms and, and poison the grain, and we're going to destroy the environment by derailing these trains so that the government literally has no choice but to make action. Uh, you know, the, the doomsday clock is at six years, but we're going to speed that bad boy up. Uh, that could be uh, another option here yeah you look at uh, what happened in ireland i think it was something similar that's what trash rat was saying uh my irl buddy trash we got to get him on he's a an expert in the conspiracy field yeah i would like to get him on um he was saying that you know it's he was theorizing it's possible that this is uh ecologic 
people, terrorism. But what a fucking weird thing. Like, oh, let's poison everyone's water. Like That's what terrorism water. is. These A terrorist is somebody who wears a suicide vest and blows himself up. Like, these people are crazy, yeah. Rusty. Yeah, and it just didn't work at all because the uh, zero response from the government. What did Pete <laughs> Buttigieg, the... What is he like? The fucking secretary of transportation, secretary of butt fucking, <laughs> whatever. He's the guy in charge of fucking transportation, the fucking butts, rails, and fucking butts. <laughs> and uh, and his up. like his eggy. Please, oh, what were you gonna say? I cut out. I said he's a master of all kinds of railing. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he, running he got derailed as well. <laughs> Um, what was it? His statement following this up was something about like how it was like something about whiteness in the workforce. It had what? nothing to do with. Yeah, let me look this up. His response to this disaster that will be felt for generations was some woke fucking race shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, We're doomed. Well, we, we are doomed. <laughs> like the world is over. How are the conservative people now the ones worried about the environment? Like, why is everything getting flipped around? I feel I think like it was uh, uh, Chris Chan's dimensional merge I heard about. It could be. Once you fuck your own mom, you shift dimensions for everybody. That's right. Well, I can't find this. Oh, wait. Focuses on too many white people and too many white construction workers. That's what his <laughs> uh, statements were about. Hmm. And didn't show up to the event. Uh, was it Norfolk? That's the company that's responsible. They didn't show up to the the meetings because they didn't feel safe because there's a fucking bunch of pissed off people. Yeah, they offered all of the townspeople one thousand dollars and said that'll cover it. And like, meanwhile, oh. like the the environment itself is making them sick and bleed out of their eyes. And normally, normally I would kind of mock and laugh at shit like this. Like whenever um, you know, Texas was having that heat wave, and we were just we were recording episodes of Trash Rats whenever that was, and we were just kind of like ripping on Texas because you know. <laughs> Fuck, that sucks. But this is something different. Not only is everyone involved, this is like the people are being fucked by either poor regulation from the rail companies, um, which is probably allowed because of fucking weird lobbying. So the politicians are a part of it. The railroad companies are a part of it. And they're going to try to cover this up as much as possible. And I feel like the uh, Biden administration, as long as they just don't talk about it, then it just never existed. And, and they you, send billions and billions of dollars to support like Ukraine. And I, this might be clickbait, but I read that some of the money we're sending to Ukraine is like paying the salaries of their politicians. And meanwhile, like fuck probably. Ohio. Like this shit is just insane. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so it's like, all right, everything feels finally is really starting to feel like it's all falling apart all around us all at once and all the pieces are starting to get into place and everyone's just powerless to do anything. I mean, what's, what's the next thing that they're going to try to do is the uh, central central currency, the government backed central currency. That's going to fucking suck. Um, what is who that? Knows this, that? That's essentially like the government wants to own money. They want to own a digital currency that they can, It'd be a lot easier for them to like uh, turn off bank accounts and uh, take away funds. And Wait, so, so once they probably, do that, is my Dogecoin wallet gonna uh, increase tenfold? Because uh, crypto is gonna be so much more valuable when the government tries to fuck with us. I'm interested. I mean, they they might just make crypto illegal or some shit. Well, but... they can try, but can they? Is there anything they can actually do to enforce that? They could make your ability if they know that you own crypto. I mean, you have to be really secret about it, but then they could just turn off all your bank accounts and make your cards not work, and then you couldn't use their currency, so you'd have to use Bitcoin. And Yeah, but so then I'll just buy everything separate. with my crypto, and we'll make our own market on the dark web where you everything is bought with Dogecoin, and I'll send your groceries to you for, you know, 0. 0.001 Dogecoin. I hope uh, it can work that way. Uh, Hopefully. Shadow government of uh, Dogecoin users one day. Yeah, well, you're gonna have to you know what I think they're going to do? Um, so, you know, I follow a lot of the Vegas news that you can use and all the Vegas headlines, subscribe to all these blogs, and there's something in Vegas called 
surge pricing and you might have you know if you're familiar with like uber you might be familiar with like surge pricing where it's like oh it's busy right now so your uber is going to cost twice as much they actually have this in vegas now but it's um in the grocery stores and, and in different areas it's not like totally all over the whole city but in certain stores you go and you pick something up there is no price tag on it because they if it's a friday night it's going to cost double for that candy bar or whatever that it would on like a tuesday morning and they actually ah. have this implemented for all their goods and services in certain properties certain areas of the city so i think if they uh yeah if they have a, a central bank digital currency where basically it's completely 100 percent instantaneously spontaneously manipulatable by the uh powers that be oh my god dude if they do that you just know it's gonna be like okay black people get 12 percent discount on everything <laughs> like white men have to pay the most for the same exact goods i guarantee like the right, price right, right. of what you buy will be tied to your identity yeah for sure yeah and especially around elections they're gonna say oh we stand uh uh against you know women making less money so we're charging men more for the products or whatever just so they can get oh voted in gosh. and then and then they'll change it back or someone else will and the game will continue dude that's fucking terrifying i mean that's already kind of what they do but on a slower scale with inflation but if they can do that instantaneously well uh, bezos where- is doing that with those amazon stores where you don't even go to the register it just you grab what you want and walk out and, and it charges you automatically yeah but then it's like instead of people having to go around and figure out what inflation is by kind of seeing what the price of milk or eggs are uh, at grocery stores around the world, they can just make it up and say, all right, well, a lot of people are buying eggs, supply and demand, uh, let's fucking raise the price uh, instantaneously. So then that's that's going to spiral out of control. I don't know, man. That's fucking... Uh, <laughs> I don't like hearing shit like that. It's just adding more <laughs> things to... To my brain to uh, add more doom and gloom into my life. Well, do uh, can we have a a bloomer instead of a doomer section? Do we have like a bloomer section? Is there any? Is that what you would call it, Aggie? Is that the best meme version of something good that is happening that we want to talk well, about? Well, you know, uh, the way that in my circles we go is we go, oh, it's so over. But then then we're so back after it is so over. So I think that um, you know this might be a little. Uh, might be a little heavy for some people, but you know, I think right now where everything is at, I think that maybe very not so nice people that might have a little too much power, I think that their power might be kind of waning a little bit. Because uh, we could say all of these things are, right. you know, very intentional, malicious, and that's certainly a possibility. But it, a lot of times, I feel like it's equally as probable that these uh, malicious actions are also just. A, a consequence of senile, incapable actors, people that uh, who may be in positions of power that are just uh, impotent and uh, they a little ho- too high on their own supply, a little bit of emperor with no clothes sort of situation. Um, and so that's just kind of how I feel uh, about some of these things. Like right now, we're talking about the you know this digital currency and this you know tracking and all these different things. It's a reaction uh, to fear of losing control. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, also this plays into some of the policies that we've seen online in recent years where something very innocuous and very just laughable to people 10 years ago or whenever it might have been, you know, now it's all of a sudden, oh, you know, everything's so just uh, volatile right now that really anything can have some traction because uh, there's such a distrust of what has been historically legitimate authority. And you got with that distrust being sown through actions and through uh, people's lived experiences of what they're going through day to day, regardless of what a headline says, people are just uh, more willing to look in alter- alternate alternative directions and just go other ways yeah. and yeah then you have where they need to start corralling off the uh, free thinkers they need to start putting those those boards up and saying whoa, whoa, whoa hold on a second uh, i think you've had too much to think sir <laughs> uh you know back to the pod oh and- man well i i agree with you i i think that yeah this is like a reaction where you know the the people in power it's all kind of coming back to them and what i think is happening while all this is happening all over the place from the beginning of the pandemic to now um it's 
kind of pushing people. It's de-radicalizing. Sorry, not de-radicalizing. It's it's uh, uh, closing the gap between like far left and far right, where before they completely had us divided and no one could agree on anything. And now I feel like the sentiments of someone who would be cons- consider themselves left or someone who consider themselves right, they're all aligned. And it's all like we do not trust the narrative and we do not trust the news. We do not trust the government. Uh, at least I'm hoping that's the case because we're under attack and we, we're starting to realize that uh, the people claiming to protect us are a part of that attack on us. So where does that go? I mean, we it would open up the potential for a third party, which kind of already happened with Trump. He was, you know, not really a Republican. He was like the people's choice. So, but I, I think that if people aren't so divided, they would be willing to um, follow someone that would come in and, and claim to be, you know, kind of draining the swamp, kind of doing what Trump did, which I don't know if that's good because that's when tyranny and dictatorships start. Whenever people stop trusting the government, it doesn't normally resolve peacefully. It usually uh, ends in a hostile takeover from either a stronger government such as China or Russia. Not that they're stronger, but they would be if we collapsed. Do you uh, think that Biden is uh, crossing his fingers that we will have to enter World War Three because uh, a sitting president uh, going into re-election has, I think, never lost while the country's at war, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I'm not really that worried about uh, Russia more than China, but but China I'm, said I that they want to back China. Russia, so really, it's like these right. two mega powerhouses that are just gonna fuck us up the ass. Like, I don't think we have the resources to compete with them, do we? So that would take. Well, we we have a, the fucking most powerful military in the world, and if we start giving, I don't know. I mean, if we like really squander that. Or if they pull out the heavy the heavy hitters and start nuking us, um, I don't know. They don't the even need do. a military. They're sending over motherfucking balloons, and we've spent yeah. millions of dollars just to shoot down balloons. Like they're draining our money without even trying at this point. Yeah, well, they got people on the inside. Oh, also with that balloon, we missed the first time, so that was just four hundred thousand dollars <laughs> that just went away. Where did Come it go? What did it hit? <laughs> Come the fuck on, man. man! Where the fuck is my team, man? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't I mean if they're doing some stuff on the inside, if they have like enough spies and uh, transplants and kind of like sleeper agents who can now just start doing these weird attacks that are hard for the government to address and fight because it goes into the core of their corruption, uh, because you know, they allowed these trains uh safety regulations to be unregulated or they're allowing more than a certain amount of chemicals to be put in the water or the information of how much is safe to be changed they can't really say oh we fucked up we were actually lying to you all uh here's what's happening russia is attacking us from within and just destroying us but then what happens to the military i mean the military is going to be operating on its own so who knows i mean what if there's just a a a military dictatorship like uh like when caesar took over rome he had the military on his side and so he goes all right I'm I'm Caesar. I'm now the emperor. Who do you think uh, could take those reins in American politics? Do we think Bernie Sanders can get the military on his side? <laughs> uh, Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> well, yeah, you might have don't seen ask, that. Don't ask. Don't tell. Uh, the statistics, I believe, you know, the uh, United States military has been having a recruiting crisis because the vast majority of Americans of military, uh, you know, serving age are all morbidly obese and have like several mental illnesses mm-hmm. minimally each and basically they they they're really trying to drop as many limits of entry as they can to uh get people in but some people have uh, drawn parallels to the collapse of uh, the Roman Empire and how at the end of it they just literally anybody off the street they could take in and say hey please uh please start going and fighting right now because we're you know we're completely screwed yeah, a lot of infighting. It was the barbarians that finally took over East Rome. Um, they had split from east to west, and they were kind of like squabbling. There was no real understanding of who was in charge anymore. That was a big aspect of why Rome fell. So anyone can say, I'm the emperor now. And if they had enough people to believe them, they go, all right, I guess so. Um, that That's 
but what you're saying about, yeah, the recruitment and the qualification of people to even fight in the military, how that's dropping so drastically, that's the long game. This is China's revenge for the hundred or for the uh, opium wars. This is their, uh, in the hundred years of shame or whatever they call it. You know, we weren't really a part of the opium wars. We probably were, but I mean, really, that was like Britain, but we were probably tied somehow. Um, and we essentially just forced them to continue to have to import opium, uh, which fucked their people up. And now they're doing that essentially to us, like flooding in all this fentanyl, getting everyone addicted onto like these, you know, ridiculous, ridiculously deadly drugs. Uh, they own TikTok. They can actually skewer, skew our opinions on something. They actually might be responsible for why the East Palestine and all these chemical spills are finally starting to get into the light because everyone on TikTok's talking about it and their algorithms might favor that. I don't know. They, this gets really conspiratorial, but what the fuck, man? I mean, what does that even mean? It's conspiratorial, therefore it's fake or it's cliche. Everything is possible now when it seemed like it would have been crazy just a few years ago. Yeah, here's my idea. The lab that in China that made uh, COVID-19, what if uh, they make a COVID-23 and they can just put it on these motherfucking balloons that will float over half of the country without being shot down? Can they put COVID-23 in a balloon and drop it onto us? Like, is that what they're trying to do? That's a pretty good way to fuck over a country without firing one bullet. Yeah, or just send some people in and, you know. Yeah, just start coughing on everybody. It. Hey, give me give me one second. You got to go take a shot? No, no. I, uh, there's, I see something precarious uh, happening. My cat's about to fall. Well, Aggie, what do you think about my balloon COVID-23 theory? Hmm. I uh, not your style. You go for lie. another way. <laughs> if you were China and you wanted to spread COVID twenty three, if not a balloon, what would you use? Uh, well, the thing that I think is that how much of our manufacturing is you know tied to China or any other you know offshore outsourced location? I think that probably about eighty percent. Yeah, we already have seen. Just the uh, like, for instance, I had an example some months back that I had said to, maybe to my own audience, uh, a relative of mine needed a part for their central heating. Uh, and I think they needed it in maybe March of last year. It was, I want to say, uh, and they were going to be on a wait list minimally six months because the part that was manufactured in a Chinese factory, that factory had basically seized up, had not had not had anything going on for months because of the COVID situation. And so they had been able to continue doing orders and been able to, you know, get their back stock out for a while. But when it came down to, okay, now we're running out and we need these last you know, we need to start rationing what we are sending out. And this wasn't even out of an ill will as really as far as we could tell on behalf of China. It was just the fact that they had shut down and we had rely on them for what we need to keep our system going. And I think that also, uh, what was it? Some uh, parts of uh, large trucks that uh, there was a lot of, uh, concern at least last year. I, I haven't heard too much on it recently, so maybe they had figured that out. But there were parts of trucks uh, that were coming into very short supply. There was a lot of trucks in these fleets, as far as making deliveries across country in these eighteen wheelers, these semi trucks, uh, where people were really just riding the last bare bones, last scrap that they had on hand, and basically just praying that that two month wait time, you know, before they could get that next part that the trucks wouldn't break down in the meantime and cause a shortage issue there. So honestly, that's what I would think. Um, I feel like these balloons, I just don't see really the purpose. I feel like it's about as much of a distraction as it can be because we also have, uh, for instance, you know, something that was brought to my attention maybe last year, the Smithfield pork processing facilities uh, in the United States, Smithfield is a very large 
uh, meat processing corporation and uh, the ownership, the majority stock in the company had been bought by Chinese investors. Fuck. And uh, there uh, had been mentioned at that time that people who had been familiar with the company and the brand said that the uh, practices in the company, the sanitation, the hygiene, the quality of the meat, all just basically all took a straight nosedive. Uh, there's, you might have seen on social media the uh, pigs, you know, they are like grinding up literally just yeah. plastic and garbage yeah, and all kinds of trash. All uh, just trash. Un to feed unclean. To these, yeah, to feed to the pigs. And that was after Smithfield had sort of changed hands. And not to say maybe the practices weren't, you know, pristine prior, but pretty much, you know, the they just stopped caring once uh, the change of ownership there. <laughs> but right. so it's things like that the you know sort of sneakily taking over companies through majority investment shares and changing things up being in control of so much of what this co this country needs to function already and yeah i mean they could really just do anything with any of that and so i feel like the the balloon just wouldn't make as much sense still plausible but i feel like they have other more um uh, low-key more direct avenues to cause issues if that was uh, their intent and if they're backing russia we're backing ukraine and we got this cold war ii going on i would be once again pretty concerned um i had i can't remember why maybe it was back during covid time when the messages of shortages on certain uh production materials coming out of china and taiwan uh well like the chips or yeah or really just any appliances or anything i, mean, I just remember saying at that time to people like yeah, maybe just buy an extra one and just keep it the keep it on hand. If there's something that you think in the next five years that you could see yourself needing to replace something that has Chinese made components and right. that, that they're a central producer for certain things, uh, yeah, maybe you want to just get that now. Better to have it. I, I, that's how I feel anyway. That you should if you have the money. And you, yeah, if you have the money and you think you're going to need it, buy it now because with inflation, which is still under speculation about how bad it actually is, uh, things like that, supply chain issues, get stuff in bulk and get whatever you need now. If you're going to, you're planning on making a big purchase, if you have the money, just go ahead and buy it because um, it's not going to be cheaper and it's not going to be any more available than it will be. Well, yes, yeah, so that as well. Yeah, with yeah with inflation, I mean, yeah, you're pretty much you buy it now for five hundred dollars, you know, and that it's going to be worth a thousand. Even if it still costs five hundred dollars two years from now, it's going to be worth you know equivalent six hundred or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, that that slow yeah. that slow takeover is that's so depressing because that's like the that's where it it gets so iffy. I mean, uh, China apparently they have. Chinese police stations in Vancouver and they're buying up land in America. And you said that, yeah, they bought Smithfield and the quality, like they're just slowly degrading the country. And so you don't really know who's in charge of what. I don't know. I mean, who owns these chemical companies? Oh, I, I will say this. We get a lot of our fluoride from China, the fluoride that's put in about 70% of all the U S water systems. Yeah, we the fluoride made China. Pete Buttigieg uh, gay. They put it's it in the water awesome. and it made him gay. Yeah, the dank fluoride atrazine combo, and all of a sudden <laughs> he was the master of rails. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Were you going to say something, Monkey? I think I cut you off. Oh, no, I said it. The, my great joke came and went. <laughs> Man, I, I've, I've been looking into fluoride. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> so for a while, if you brought up fluoride, that was kind of the pinnacle cliche of tinfoil hat. Yeah. Like, oh, there's fluoride in the water? Like, it's been debated for since it was uh, first initiated. In I thought they said they did that on purpose because it makes our teeth healthier. Yeah, they, they, that's what they said. Um, the real reason, at least that I believe, is uh, was to cover up uh, chemical companies. This is going to be my next video. I have a whole segment on it, but I guess I'll just in the next guillotine video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's all about water. Um, okay, well, and, good timing. Uh, so, 
I, I'm probably going to be repeating myself from the script because it's already in my head. But essentially, if you wanted to obliterate hundreds of thousands of Japanese people in 1945, you would need uh, uh, tons of uh, atomic bombs. Or you just need two atomic bombs. But in order to get those atomic bombs, in order to make them, you would need enriched uranium. And in order to enrich that uranium, you need fluoride. That's the main chemical that's used to enrich uranium to make the atomic bombs. So they hired out, um, you know, like a lot of companies were changing their, like what they were manufacturing to help the war effort. Like Ford had to, uh, in this case, DuPont uh, started producing fluoride for the Manhattan Project. And, uh, and in deep water New Jersey, they, uh, their chemical emissions from their fluoride creation was like going downwind into all these farms, these peach orchards. And it was making all the farm workers sick, the animals sick, and it was killing the crops. And, you know, people were starting to report all this like crazy shit that was happening to their farms. People were getting skeptical about the food. Should we even export this food? No, because there's dangerous shit happening with the farm. And we think it's related to DuPont. So they started, all these farms and farmers started suing DuPont and the Manhattan Project uh, because, you know, they were killing their crops. And so as a response, the Manhattan Project starts to panic a little bit and they're going, oh shit, I think we actually are causing this. We need to figure out what the effects of, like the, the full effects of fluoride on people are and on animals. So they start testing it. This guy's name was, I don't remember his first name, it was Dr. Hodge. He worked for the Manhattan Project, and he was writing to, like, the generals and colonels uh, of the Manhattan Project and the chiefs and whatnot and saying, we need more funding. Here's our findings. We need funding for uh, testing of fluoride on animals and humans. They instantly approved it. Later, they sent the same doctor over to the University of Rochester, which is notorious because they tested unwitting patients uh, exposing them to plutonium and uranium and a few other things, killing like fucking 13 of them or something like that. So they, they started this new program called Program F, which its main goal was to study the effects of fluoride on humans and animals and to find evidence that would be helpful to fight litigation prior and uh, potential litigation against the Manhattan Project. And at that point, the post-war bomb program because they needed more bombs. The bomb essentially made us the world power. We had the most dangerous weapon in the entire world. We're in charge. We're making more than ever. We need more fluoride in order to enrich more uranium to make these bombs. And if people start suing, that could create a whole host of disasters, especially if they win. So if these farmers won these litigations, that's bad PR. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. It opens up the door for future lawsuits. Uh, people are going to be very, very much against fluoride, and you're not going to have uh, the public support at all. So they wanted to squash this. So this doctor, in a supposedly declassified memo, uh, this is a longer memo, but he suggested to the, the head of uh, the medical division at the Manhattan Project, Maybe we could curb the public fear of fluoride through showing its potential uh, benefits in dental health because it was known to have dental health benefits in the past in small doses because it, it would like, I guess it like calcifies your teeth. So it prevents cavities essentially, but it's also not something you're supposed to ingest because that same effect that it has on your teeth has it on your bones and on your joints. And, um, so then they, they started, there was Grand Rapids, Michigan, which I'm not really sure how that started. That was the first place to start fluoridating water. I'm not sure if it was for the same reasons, but that was a part of the same study where four other major cities in the United States in a 10 to 15 year experiment, they started fluoridating the water to test the blood and, and tissue samples of the residents. And um, yeah, they found that it did have in whatever doses they were using did have beneficial dental effects. And so they said, all right, we got what we need. <laughs> Fluoride is good for you. Now we can put it in the water. Um, 
and anyone who's like the public was on their side because they're they're seeing like the town next to them. What they have fluoride in their water and it's like helping their teeth be better. Oh, we want that too. So public interest interest changed because enough time had passed since you know these um, failed lawsuits from the farmers. So now there's fluoride in the water. Studies are coming out later where people first off it was protested by a lot of people, but the normies were all about fluoride. Um, not uh, enough I, studies. I, about- I just want to interject with one yeah, thing real quick. Let you continue. Uh, very interesting how you see that pattern throughout a lot of our, uh, you know, maybe it's not in the books these days as much, but through a lot of, you know, recorded history when you can find the right, uh, maybe less altered source, a little more uh, expanded source, you'll see a lot of changes that were uh, ended up maybe not being for the betterment of the public at right. 100% good faith capacity and people, uh, you know, weren't really on board with it and the government just... Uh, does it anyway and they're like oh no no this will be good don't worry guys we got you we got you and Mm -hmm. uh you know fast forward a hundred years or whatever and um the water's got rainbows coming out of it but continue (laughs) yeah so so that idea of you know these bad faith implementations of systems that dictate you know how what we consume um how we consume it and it happens for long enough that we just get used to it we don't even think about it like oh there's fluoride in the water um well it's good for your teeth right Who would be against that? Oh, what, you think that that's a bad chemical? Even though there have been studies, peer-reviewed studies, nationwide, uh, worldwide studies that all have come to similar conclusions that it's a very toxic, it's a neurotoxin that lowers IQ in children, and especially in developing children. Um, They did this in Canada. They did this in the United States. They did this in China. China does not fluoridate their water because they have so much fluorine or fluoride already sorry, in their water from either natural or also it's a byproduct of, you know, making chemicals and a lot of other manufacturing. So they have so much in their water that they recognize it as dangerous. They're not fluoridating their water. Uh, So they sell their fluoride, which is something that normally you would have to pay if you were a chemical company. This is a hazardous byproduct of your manufacturing. You would have to properly dispose of this or be fined, and it's going to cost you a lot of money to properly dispose of fluoride. Now... You can sell it to water systems, city water systems who fluoridate their water. And we have an infrastructure, a mental infrastructure in place where it's good for you. So who's only crazy people are going to oppose the idea that there's fluoride in your water. It's good for your teeth. It's in fucking everything. You're not supposed to ingest it. Why are you bathing in it? Why are you drinking it? It's not good in your body. It fucks your joints up. You get dental or you get fucking skeletal fluorosis. Let me check that. I might be saying the wrong things. I'm going to get mixed up here. Uh, You know what? Fact checking is a core component of our society. So we're happy that you do. So, well, I'm just going to move past it. Someone else can fact check it. But yeah, there's dental fluorosis. There's neurotoxicity, uh, lower IQ in children. Um, Also, too much fluoride is also bad for your teeth. But the people who have been studying this, they kind of just get shoved under the rug their results get shoved under the rug and it just keeps getting passed off as though this is a already long since debunked, you know, theory that fluoride is bad for you. It should not be in the water in the first place. If its main goal is to uh, just protect dental health, it's in toothpaste. Just brush your teeth, (laughs) but you're drinking it and you're bathing in it and you're watering your plants with it. And yeah, uh, at its core, like the core, elements can be found naturally but not in the abundance also the um the safe the safe amount that they claim anything over this is dangerous that's been dropping over the years so this is the same type of idea of how lead was accepted in so many different products for decades before they realized like oh this is having adverse effects on people's health maybe we should take it out finally there's money behind it there's money to keep this in place And to think that these systems were put into place on good faith and not just to cover the ass of the people who were involved in the fluoride being released and causing all these like health issues on these farms or whatever. It's insane. They've never had our backs. They've never looked out for our best interest. It's always been money. They're trying to cover their ass. This is going to be the chemical spill. This is the fucking EPA or the CDC raising the amount of vinyl chloride that is safe to drink. This is why, yeah, again, why there's the, the rainbow fucking rivers. Um, 
And it, all right, so the idea is that when it, it's it's happened for so long that people can't focus on all this. We're overwhelmed with shit. And so it's we just have to accept that the systems in place are built on the backs of competent people, the giants of the past. And we're trusting that there's longevity there and that they were doing it for the betterment of humanity and not for a temporary uh, advancement of their own wealth or power or whatever. And this is what's essentially happened over and over and over again in all different parts of our society. And now we are really on a house of cards that's built on fucking lies and flawed individual cards. And if you look at any single one thing, any single one aspect of our life, and you look into it, there is some fucked up corruption there. It's in our foods. It's like why seed oils? The only reason why seed oils are still allowed in food is because they were being put in the food before the um, FDA was even created. So they were already considered generally safe for for consumption, something like that. I forget what the the term is. But Are you telling me I them. shouldn't be drink, uh, drinking rape seed oil every <laughs> night? <laughs> you should be. You'll never take rape my rape seed, seed from me, Rusty. Man, come up with a better name than rape seed. Well, they Jesus did. I, they Christ. changed it to canola, I think. Oh, consent seed? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, goes oil tube. Well, Rusty, should I take uh, the last 10 minutes of the podcast and just put it over footage of you uh, sawing and hammering at your guillotine and then your next video is already done? <laughs> Sounds like you don't have to do too much work now. Yeah, right. I already got the um, the recording out there. Yeah, it's just, just imagine like you trying to read the script, like you're going to be mumbling and fucking up, and it's going to take an hour to do what you just did fluently. You know, just take the podcast. Fuck it. I hope that's fluent because like this shit drives me insane, and it's really hard to put it all in words and, and get out the entirety of what what I'm feeling or like. Uh, it, but for real though, I mean, it's just like. Every aspect of our life is somehow corrupt. It's like the EPA is corrupt. The train fucking system's corrupt. Our water is fucked. Our chicken industry, our uh, supply chains, our clothing, the, the, uh, the batteries that we have in our computers and in our phones that are being manufactured f- through slave labor in fucking Africa. It's... And so what can we do? I mean, as humans, we do have the power as citizens of this country and the consumers who consume and allow these things to exist. We can shut down a system. We can. And we have to do it by having a, a focus, know which ones we need to, and, and a game plan. But it's hard to get so many people involved because we're all dis- disorganized and we're all distracted because we're watching fucking shitty shows on Netflix. Well, and we're getting dumber by the generations. And I yeah. just read today, like, thanks to remote learning and the whole COVID fiasco, fourth graders cannot read in America. Like, the average fourth grader cannot fucking read. Yeah. <laughs> and high it's schoolers, just... the teachers are being told to read the content to them as opposed well, to them just reading it. Where was that Uh, recently where like it was like uh, Maryland or something where fucking none of the schools uh, had students who could pass like the the national standard for math? Somewhere around there, someone's going to have to look that up, but it was like it might have just been a city, but every single school failed. They were not good. They could not do math. They can't read. This is the hundred year plan. They're slowly they're taking our attention. We're all addicted to fucking social media and TikTok and uh, junk food. We're not exercising. We're just assuming that someone is taking care of it. Someone's taking care of all that. I don't need to focus on it. All my focus is is getting enough money from my job in order to pay rent, so I can and pay for my Netflix subscription, which I canceled by the way, because fuck Netflix and all That's them. Right. Well, you cancel, signed up because you wanted to shit. see cuties, and the lack of cuties <laughs> too. This is the final straw. You wanted that sequel I, so bad. Listen, let's just stop talking about Epstein's uh, list for, you know, a few more years. Uh-oh. Uh, um. <laughs> Rusty Shackleford's going to be on there? Oh, uh, speaking of which, Rusty, I wanted to talk about the Net- or, uh, Hulu revival of King of the Hill seems to be official. And you and I famously did an interview with uh, uh, Dale Gribble himself. 
And I right. wanted to get back into contact with him so we could maybe talk to him again now that the show is coming back. And I could not. Like, I searched through all of my emails and cannot find the contact for him. So I, I don't know how to communicate with him. And he hasn't posted on YouTube for nine months. So he might just be, you know, AFK for forever at this point. I think you're going to bring him on to the next Trash Rats and he's going to be like going over the thing. He has, he'll not have listened to this one and he'll come in just like straight on the exact same train of thought as Rusty and going like twice. He's like full real Dale Gribble, you know, he's like. Well, Johnny no Hardwick does have a lot in common with Dale Gribble, I think. I mean, he's. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like he lives he in Texas. Yeah. So, all right. I'll, well, I remember I thought maybe I got his contact email. I'll see if I can find an old email from him. I may or may not have emailed him. And at one point I had his personal cell phone number, but that was on my old phone. So, like, I can't even find that either. But that would be so cool if we could talk to him about the revival. Oh, man, we didn't even we didn't even get over. uh, We didn't even start talking about AI and that whole fucking shit show that that's going to happen. Have you been using the chat bot GPT? I've been using it a little bit. I think I haven't used the Bing one, but I've been using a uh, chat GPT uh, for some research stuff just to get like closer to it's a little easier to use than Googling. You're trying to research also, how to make it say the N word and you you have not found any solution yet. Have they not figured that out yet with the Dan? The, yeah, I think they have. Uh, now? I think Dan does not work anymore, but for a while mm-hmm. it did because I, I did see okay. a few questions answered about a certain cat. The world's going to be very, very irritating. The internet world is going to be very irritating in the near future because every thumbnail is going to be uh, mid-journey or, <laughs> or one of these other art things. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to look cool. I mean, the art is actually really fucking good. I've been using mid-journey, and I'm very impressed. But the dialogue, like having like chat GPT write stuff or one of these other ones, it comes off very annoying and artificial i didn't have uh, a senator or some shit just on like the house floor uh give a speech that was written by ai oh. did anyone hear about that i did not hear about that okay i'll have to look that one up later um i don't know um i, I guess i don't really uh, th- that's for another time because i do enjoy rambling on have you tried to make it write music for you? Like, if you typed in, um, write the next Rusty Cage knife game song, and it popped up, would you do the AI knife game song? Yeah, I would, but it's not there yet. Uh, it's it can't songs, make a song? A beautiful... I mean, songs, it can... Right, it so imitates there's, there's a Shakespearean sonnet perfectly. I gotta see which, which programs these are, because, like, some of the ones that are doing music aren't necessarily open. They're all in beta, and they're not open to the public. But I had Chat GPT try to write a song in the style of Rusty Cage. It had no idea who I was, obviously. <laughs> and the song was like four chords. It was just very basic. And it was just all about like Rusty Cages or some shit. It was dumb. Mm, well, uh, I, m- maybe I will fuck write like a beautiful poem about um, stabbing a knife between your fingers. And like you have to just like write paragraphs and paragraphs of parameters if you want it to do something that the, specific. Right, right. So I need to figure out those parameters. I'm definitely going to heavily use it, not in the upcoming video, but the one after that. I'm going to see how much of that I can get AI to do because it's going to be like the ultimate battle against the algorithms and AI. Well, and, you uh, know how people are – uh, you can like put anybody's voice through the thing and now you can simulate anybody's voice you know, yeah, fairly I gotta well? Yeah, I got to do You reminded me. I, I have to do that. I need to pay for the program and upload – yeah, enough of me talking that it can do that. Yeah, well, it's gonna. It's I was gonna, gonna say Kino Corner was just telling me yesterday that like for his video on her, which is like about dating an AI, he's just he's not even gonna record it. He's having his own voice through the AI recording thing for that whole video. So I thought that was pretty funny. So the the problem with that that I see is that it probably doesn't mess with Kino too much because he just talks in a monotone, <laughs> sociopathic fucking yeah droning, but like. You know, for for humans with actual emotions, uh, you know, you want to put emphasis on certain things that you find particularly important. Your pace, your cadence is all comes from within, and that's what people connect to. So if you try to outsource that to AI, it's not going to be able to figure that out. Well, you think if I put an hour of just me doing the like monkey scream that it would not translate it out and everything I said would be screaming? Okay, fuck it. What's the name of the website? 
I'll, I'll find it and I'll as send far it as to I you. know, you can't even do it anymore because they made Emma Watson read out a Mein Kampf. So like, I think they shut it down for general use. God damn it! All right, well, if it isn't, then I'm gonna request from the two of you that you send me. I don't know, uh, 30 minutes or whatever the minimum is to have like a decent um, voice, you know, whatever AI voice of each of us. And by the time we do the podcast next, we can at least have the first 30 minutes all just <laughs> written and scripted out and see if anyone notices. Hey, hey, uh, Rusty. There's no way they'll notice. Rusty. What's up? So in the last like two minutes, when you're talking about the AI knife game and you saw it didn't work, I went and just signed up for a chat GPT account right now. And I present to you the AI knife game song. Oh, my All God. Right. <laughs> I picked up my knife and held it tight with a shaking hand. I started the fight, a game of chance with stakes so high. One wrong move and someone could die. The thrill of the game, the risk of it all. A dangerous dance between life and downfall. I play with fire with a knife in my hand. A game so risky, but I just can't stand. The blade <laughs> glinted in the dim. Oh, no. Ming light is I took a breath and I steadied my sight. I aim for spaces between my fingers, but with every move, my heart just lingers. The thrill of the game, the risk of it all. A dangerous dance between life and downfall. I play with fire with a knife in my hand. A game so risky, but I just can't stand. The tension mounts as the seconds pass. The adrenaline rush like broken glass. My palms are slick, my fingers have gone numb, but I just can't. Can't stop, I need to overcome the thrill of the game, yes, the risk of it all. A dangerous dance between life and downfall. I play with fire with a knife in my hand, a game so risky, but I just can't stand. The game goes on yeah, until I... it is done. The oh. victor is the one who has won, but the scars <laughs> the remain victor is seen the one and who has won. Are the proof of a game that's both foolish and mean. Yes, the thrill of the game, <laughs> the risk of it all. Oh a dangerous Dangerous dance between really life and downfall. Yes, I play with fire and a knife in my hand. A game so risky, but I just can't stand. So if you ever think oh to play God. this game, remember <laughs> the risks, the danger, and the shame, and find another way to fulfill that need without risking your life, your future, and your creed. Wow. Okay. So multiple things that I, I first off, I want you to screenshot your prompts. And did you make up that melody? I just I just made it up right now, yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. The melody's a little bit um a, a little bit Irish, uh, jiggy. I mean, the fact um, that he just came up with that off the top of his head, no, I don't know if you need no, to criticize yeah. that part. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, all right, but <laughs> I mean, but also like lyrically, would you uh, agree better. that that is better than any song you've written for the Knife Game? Yeah, yeah, no, because like the Knife, I hated hated writing the Knife Game songs because there was like fucking how many different ways can I talk about stabbing my hands and like whiskey and everyone does it. it's a tradition blah 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 but yeah that was good so i want those lyrics and <laughs> I'll, co I'll copy it down into the chat right now so you could properly uh yeah, yeah i'm gonna slim it down and i probably change the I chorus the chorus sucked and they repeated it way too many times yeah i i might i might like mess with the um okay cool uh, i might mess with the uh the prompts as well to like add in a few things like maybe add in whiskey or blah 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 but i mm, already yeah. used that Goofy word, but then I'm gonna make the AI knife game song, and I'll probably post it on my second channel. I mean, this shit was so good, you can make a whole album in a day at this point. Just come up with some good instrumental. I mean, they're never gonna understand the human experience. They're just, but yeah, everything is gonna be written by fucking AI. It's all gonna be like shit like this. No one's gonna have an attachment to. But isn't that pop music anyways? It doesn't. Uh, the really prompt matter. was Words only just... write a song about a risky knife game, and it knew it was <laughs> stabbing between the fingers. That's crazy. Oh, crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Okay, all right. I'm going to fuck with this, and I will have an AI knife game. Um, I mean, it sounds like Aggie just did it for you. That was pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Somebody needs to... I mean, we can't really edit out me and Rusty laughing and talking over it, but otherwise, it's a pretty good song. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll, I'll film it, and maybe even by the time I do it, they'll have the video AI, so I could have... Shit, if I can get AI to sing it in my voice... You're not even going to perform gotta... it. Hey, and then have... You guys want to hear uh, two verses? I just typed in another prompt here. See if you can guess the prompt. Okay. I'll just do two verses here. This will be a All fun right. game. 
Sitting in my basement, microphone in hand, a bottle of whiskey, the only friend I understand. <laughs> Talking to myself, pretending people care. In this podcast world, nothing seems fair. Alcoholic podcasting, my only <laughs> escape. Drunk on my thoughts, my mind is a blank slate. Pouring out my heart to an empty room, hoping someone listens before I meet my doom. Okay, that has to be Toby Reynolds, the musical. <laughs> Uh, prompt was write a song about alcoholic podcasting. <laughs> Man, uh, it's you know it's not bad. It's coming out with something. It's better than any lyrics I would write, and it came up with that in one second. So that's learn to fucking work with your hands, people. Uh, learn a skill that AI can't just easily do. Well, um, I don't know. I don't think AI could ever make a Simi and Jimmy video. Not to like toot my own horn, but like. There's a lot of humor that I, I don't think the computer can finagle. Yeah, well, eventually they, eventually they should be able to, but it's going to be like manufactured humor. Well, I, I've, have you been watching the, the Seinfeld thing before it got banned? Like, that's artificial humor. I, well, I thought it got banned for a pretty funny reason. Yeah, well, I thought the whole thing was funny, and I hopefully it, it comes back soon. I, I'm in their Discord, so you can still watch it like live in their Discord, but it was more oh, fun cool. with the Twitch chat. And they got canceled because it was Jerry on stage telling how he wanted to make a bunch of trans jokes, but then realized that no one would be laughing. <laughs> yeah. And then they canceled the show on on Twitch because it was transphobic. Yeah. And that's Twitch. Classic. No fun allowed. You These, can't even uh, say that trans jokes are not funny without getting banned. Yeah. It used to yeah. be the Twitch of the finger for playing Counter-Strike and Halo. Now it's the Twitch of the finger for the mod to delete your channel. Mm-hmm. So I don't know whether to be happy and like, is this a, a bloomerism that cool AI actually might make a lot of aspects of my life easier. Like if there's cool AI uh, video editing where I can easily fix something rather than trying to like go through all this fucking 3D animation program. Oh my God. Vegan ass Valerie's going to be out of a job. Uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> sorry, Emp. No more money for you guys. <laughs> Just input the video. Well, he was he was also talking about wanting to like emulate his voice, but he's not sure if he's going to. He's probably going to try to do it on a second channel that's already AI generated content. Whatever happened to his second channel where he's making those fucking top tens? Remember that the the robot one? The um, which one? He. Has this been memory hold that we talked about this in person? Like, Emp and his girlfriend made some weird fucking second channel with like spam content. Yeah, they they had an AI generated visual of like Max Headroom, and and it was just. I thought they were writing these scripts and performing them. This was like over a year ago. Top tens? I don't remember uh, that. For me, it's Downward Diary. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching so some of those. Right, so he's got Downward Diary. Yeah, what the fuck was that? That was... Right, okay, that's him talking... They're reading comments, um, reviews. Oh, that's... Yeah, he's re reading, like, the 10 funniest reviews of, uh, like, any given movie or something. Yeah, I, I think that was just kind of probably a lame idea. I don't know, it didn't catch on. Well, he should keep doing those. I like those videos. Do you like the... Uh, how do you like the Downward Diaries? Uh, I haven't finished any of them, but uh, I've watched the first couple minutes of a few of them. Yeah, he's been enjoying that content. I I really can't wait to fucking finish this series so I can start doing shit on my second channel and just kind of dicking around a little bit. You going to film yourself driving in your car? Um, no. Oh. But there are things I do want to do. The only reason why I'm not doing it now is because I don't want to break character. What character? That, uh, that I'm a... Uh, oh, that you're homeless alcoholic. living in a tent? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic schizophrenic who lives, who's building a guillotine in my in my yard. So that's like the excuse you're going to give for why we haven't gotten more Rusty Cage show is that you're canonically homeless? Yeah, because it, it would be really awkward if I was trying to present a reality and then taking people out of it hmm. uh, just for the sake of content. I do want to do more Rusty Cage show because now there's like so much more shit that I want to talk about and I feel like I can talk about. Um. You know, just like I, I'm kind of glad the world's going to shit because it's opening doors for my mentality. I don't give a fuck. About, I think about the content I was making like in 2017. It's just shit. It was all uh, bad. Like what? What are some examples? Because that's 
Like that's oh, the peak Rusty Wheel Cage fandom for Wheel me. Wheel of Punishment too. Okay, that's fair. But what else? <laughs> um, did we do any other videos together? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a uh, eating chicken wings at Rusty's house, but that was on my channel, I guess. Everything we did together that was on my channel was complete dog shit. But I think you made some good stuff consistently uh, throughout just, the years. It, I guess it, it wasn't important. It was all just like too happy go lucky. And I know people like that. That was actually where my channel was the most popular was 2018. Um, but now it's like if I want to if I want to put effort towards making content, I want it to have some sort of meaning or or leave people with something. Not that I'm just drinking like disgusting sodas from a soda stream. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh People in my community, when I said basically, you know, I'm just uh, going to go be wagey McWager and go, uh, you know, work in the diamond mines with cuffs around my feet or whatever, uh, they're sure. they're planning on basically running like 10,000 hours of archive stream through AI bot and just like AI generating whole <laughs> albums and whole like live streams since I literally had thousands of hours of content <laughs> that they could feed into these systems. So maybe, you know, there's enough... Uh, if people could build, you know, you can do your thing that fulfills you as an artist. Yeah. And if people want that old stuff, uh, they can just uh, put it into the uh, matrix or whatever and pop out some some rusty bots. Okay. All right. All right. Two two ideas, real quick. Uh, one's one I thought of, and one I just thought of a second ago, based on what you said. Uh, Eggy, you should if you have all these streams, or they they have them. You should have a loop of all the streams. That's just constantly live streaming on your channel. So it's a 24 hour, uh, seven days a week live stream of your content and it just repeats. So there's enough content that it can keep going. That way people can tune in whenever they want. I'm sure there's some reason why this won't work. Like, uh, cause I'm a little too, uh, a little too spicy sometimes. So eventually it's gonna, I'm gonna have my Jerry Seinfeld on stage <laughs> moment, except it's gonna be a little more like Kramer at the Laugh Factory. Well, maybe that. And, and then also, it's not gonna show up in people's feeds unless it stops and restarts. But well, I don't I know. What I'm about that, uh, that uh, chill tunes to listen while you're doing homework? Like that was 80 months long and that was always popping up in my recommended. How many live streams can you do on a single channel? If we had a channel, I think that four have simultaneously. Yeah, I think yeah, because there's channels that um, that definitely have. Uh, well, I, they might have changed it now, but I know for sure at one point because uh, people. Yeah, I definitely have seen it because it's like because um, people could live stream themselves, but they could also have like a music stream going or whatever. They could have uh, ambiance stream going. There's some of those channels I think that have like four of those different, you know. Uh, mood or whatever you know yeah, certain ambiance okay. raindrops rain on a wood or whatever the hell you know type thing oh that's it then May, w have a channel and then have uh four different types of content constantly looping on a live stream and uh people can just kind of tune in oh i like uh monkey's uh old videos Let let's listen through all of his um uh, what were your anime reviews or something? And they just go through a loop. Yeah, that would also get banned off of YouTube, considering <laughs> yeah, that like eight of those episodes were banned at some point. But but why if they weren't banned because of copyright infringement, which some um, of them were for sure. True. Well, maybe there's a way to edit that out, and I know you don't really have an archive of that. Uh, yeah, there's that an archive of all my old stuff out there, so I could do it. I, I have all the anime reviews on my computer. I was thinking of doing okay. a like a live stream reaction to some of my older stuff at some point, Every like point. a season one anime review, you know, watch the first 10 episodes. But uh, after the stream ends, I would have to like take it down or make it Patreon exclusive. I can't leave that up. Our channel's going to be gone. Yeah. Well, never. You're right. Right. So that's you reacting to it. I mean, that's a good idea. And I would do something like that because you're just going to get a lot in super chats. Well, um, and it's just fun for me because I don't rewatch my shit. I, I also want to do a stream reaction to an old podcast I did with Digibro called uh, Insufferable Social Media Argument Podcast because I recorded most of those while basically blackout drunk and uh, Digibro I, did as well. That's when I met you uh, was whenever you're doing that with. Um, oh, really? With Digi. 
Yeah, so I uh, I would love to react to things I said five years ago or however long it was. Uh, probably the edgiest show we've ever done, and I literally don't remember anything I said. So <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. All right, so here's my my other idea. Um, I I have an anvil, and it's not the largest anvil, but it's uh it's probably about sixty seventy pounds. And I'm going to do um, a 24-hour live stream of Anvil Gaming. <laughs> and so it's going to have like a Twitch, you know, back set up with like all the lights that change colors. It's going to have like whenever so- someone donates or uh, gifts money, something happens. Like maybe like a little hammer comes down and just hits the Anvil. The Anvil is going to have some headphones on and just a controller in front of it. And it's going to be playing like Red Dead 2 or something. But the character is not going to be moving. So there's nothing going to be happening in this except that it's a constant... <laughs> live feed of an anvil with like the headset on uh trying to play a video game and the only way to make something happen is to donate and I, that's probably a fucking retarded idea but uh shit like that works so i'm just gonna go ahead and do it i mean at least the chicken city you get to see some chickens running around i don't know even what is my benefit if i to see an anvil get hit with a hammer um, I don't know. It'll it'll make some every time you donate, it's gonna like show like Wiley e. Coyote getting hit with an anvil <laughs> or someone opening their backpack thinking a parachute's inside of an anvil comes out. Okay. I'm, or, now I'm on board. Yeah, a lot of anvil related like uh images will be popping up and sounds and then actual in footage sounds will be happening as well. Can there be um, a donation goal? Like if we hit a thousand dollars, we will drop yes. this anvil on Rusty. Uh, yeah, all right. So uh, yeah, that's a good idea. So maybe at the end, it can be like, all right, uh, donation goal, and there'll be four different items that the anvil will be dropped on. And if we, whatever the item that we reach the goal of, I'll just drop it off the guillotine onto that item mm. until I hit it. Um, This is fucking, again, this is fucking retarded, but I, I think this could work because people spend their money on stupid shit Everyone is too dumb to realize that <laughs> they need to save their money and they need to be stocking up on food and storing water and getting like food protection bins um, and, you know, like the air oxygenated baggies. You know, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep it real. To be honest, uh, I've been doing this literally for 10 years. And there's yeah. always something. There's always like the next like happening like yeah, 10 years right. ago I, I i bought my like because I, I was uh when i had like my first house that i was renting where i was living in like a full had like a, all this full space and i filled it up with all this stuff and then nothing happened and i spent the next two years eating the goods or whatever and then it was like some other thing comes up and then i you know it just goes on and now it was me you flu live. a few years ago i sat there and had all this stuff and i slowly ate and drank my rations now it's ohio and <clears throat> i mean to be honest it's like, all right, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna support, you know, just total burying head in the sand kind of activity. But to be honest, I don't know. And that before I was an adult, you know, because what I was twenty, about twenty one at that time when I w- was out there living in that house I was renting and doing these things, you know, there was probably something in like two thousand eight, right? When I was sixteen, seventeen years old, two thousand eight, you know, and then that was uh, it's the recession, and there's probably people out, you know, clearing off shelves at that time too, and. I mean, once again, like I'm sure it's it's not a bad pattern to be you know to be aware of things or whatever. But I'm gonna I'm not gonna lie, like I'm out here buying all this stuff for Ohio, and I'm like, I don't know, I, I'm just I'm tired. No, I get it. I, it, it <laughs> right, it's it's tiring, and also right. There's so many. It, it's it's rough when you get stuck in this mindset where the end of the world is around the corner every single day because of mm-hmm. every single thing that comes up. And the first time I really actually ever even felt this at all was. COVID, it like shocked me. It it made me um, fearful of the future and and there was there were runs. The thing is like there are things that happen where you know all the PPE PPE gear was gone. Uh, they were limiting what kind of how much food you could buy from the grocery store, how many cans you could get, things like that. And I know that's all a reaction on the store's end uh, based on the human panic, but. Uh, eventually it's gonna i mean like listen i bought all this fucking pasta i got in storage bins <laughs> and the price of pasta is uh considerably higher than it was when i bought it yeah i laughed at you for buying all that spaghetti or whatever the fuck but now you're saving money you don't have to even go to the store 
yeah, that's I, true. I'm, yeah. I'm never. I'm not gonna buy pasta from the store for like the next fucking six years. I think I might have boxes of spaghetti I bought when I first moved here like four years ago. So it, pasta will just sit there forever. Yeah. No. I all right. I will say I did make a big mistake by doing the same thing with eggs. Um, half a year ago. Yeah, uh, you can't store those too long, Rusty. It's not it's not going great, but <laughs> we're working on it. I started burying them in the ground, fermenting them. Are uh, they going to grow Chinese into secrets. new <laughs> egg trees? Yeah, I'm hoping so. They're going <laughs> to ferment, and then we're going to have century eggs. Oh, wow. Speaking of China. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, so I'm I'm taking on their influence. Well, I, I'm not a trash rats historian, but I, I would wager this is probably the longest episode of all time. Uh, you guys oh, want to wrap right. up or do you guys have more you want to talk about? Because I could go all night. I I guess I'm done. That's fair. I mean, we'll we'll come back probably March or April for more trash ratting. So it's not like we're saying we'll, goodbye for too long. Yeah, we'll check back in and kind of see where we all are, where the world is. This was a good episode because so much happened just in the past few months. Yeah, usually when we did this weekly, we would struggle to find a good story, but right. when the world is falling apart on the daily, you know, we got plenty to discuss here. That's right. So thank God for the end of the world. It gives us good YouTube content. I completely agree, and hopefully more good and positive things that make us all love life will just be popping up like flies in a bucket of rotting fruit. Wait, okay, so let me say some things real quick. <laughs> First off, my question is, am I a guest on this show or am I a, a co-host? No, this is Trash Rats International. It's uh, your show as much as mine. Oh, uh, okay. Um, and second, I know it's impossible to get Reactor on, but Jesus Christ, did we just kind of like mock him and bring him through the ringer? He's just right on everything. Well, does he want to come on here? I was going to say, I tried to add him as a friend on Discord, and I guess he just hasn't seen it or he doesn't want to be my friend, but I was going to invite him on. He just hasn't responded. I think he's just really busy and super wrapped up in fucking. The fact that his brother is one of the most famous, richest, uh, independent reporter, whatever, of all time. He's probably busy helping him run that multi million dollar business, and he doesn't have time for our shitty podcast. Yeah. Hey, Reactor. Well, you know what's funny is he's still paying for like a lot of the subscription, like podcast stuff from the show. I got I got to text him and tell him to cancel that because it's like Podbean or whatever it is. I'm well, that's, still getting emails. Well, he's paying for it, I guess, so that old fans can still get it in their podcast feed. But and their RSS feed. I don't even. I don't fucking know. Either way. Uh. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll see if. Hey, to be fair, all the Patreon money has been going in his pocket for months, so... That's true. He's, it's paid for. He's fine. Do we know where we're at with that? With the Trash Rats Patreon? Let, let's try to close it out with that. Do, do um, we not shut it down? It should be shut down. Trash we're Rats not getting paid Patreon. for it. <laughs> That's right. We're if not. anybody is still paying for that, they're an idiot. It's a wash. Okay. Is there any way to tell? <laughs> We have eight patrons. Idiots. But I can't see. How do, do we all have the information? How do I sign in? I want to see how much money we I've have. never had the info. <laughs> it's just Reactor, I think. Oh, my God. He set this up brilliantly. Meanwhile, all my IP, my artwork, it's all just making, pulling in all this money. Okay, well, we still have eight patrons. So eight people are getting charged somewhere between... Um, five dollars a month, which is the minimum, and twenty five dollars. Oh a my month. God, Baron von Brunk, switch your account. Give that five bucks to me. Oh, we also have a fifty dollars a month. There's no way nobody can be that <laughs> dumb. Is is Nerd City back? <laughs> He's finally patroning me again. <laughs> all right, so all right, so at a minimum, we're making forty dollars a month on Patreon. The second we tier aren't. Be, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, Reactor is but he's making... I, people can pledge a dollar, right? I thought it was five bucks just to get into the Discord, but people could pledge less uh, if they wanted to. Okay, I'll I figure thought. this out, and, and then uh, I'll, uh, I'll send it to you because I'm interested. Hmm. You think we should sue Reactor like he tried to sue Tim? Yeah. He owes us an upwards of dozens of dollars. Now, I'm not going to even bring up all the AdSense you know, revenue that I haven't also paid out for months. From I, I'm guessing that's channel. zero. I don't think those, like I, I can get into the YouTube studio and I think the trash rats channel makes about $2 a month. 
Yeah, it's it's pretty low. Yeah, so I, I'm not too worried about that one. <laughs> hey, maybe maybe we at some point maybe we can start up another podcast again. We're um, doing one right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's make well, some we, uh, AI top 10 channels, maybe a couple, and then we could like uh, have AI generated podcasts. I mean, we've at least for me, because people were sending me whole scripts with my AI voice. So I already got an AI voice. I, I'm already all set up. You guys need to get your AI voice going. AI generate like 40 pages of script, and then we'll just like kind of just uh, we could throw it all together in a audacity and try to keep them a little spaced out so that we're not all rambling at the same time. But yeah. All right, all right. So, so Mumkey, what do you think about the train <laughs> crash in Ohio? Pete Buttigieg did nothing wrong. All hail well, Joe well, Biden. We could have Kanye West on every week. We could have The Rock. We could have Mr. <laughs> Beast. All these guys have AI Why voice, not? you know, uh, modules out there already. So, I mean, yeah, Trash Rats featuring Kanye West and Mr. Beast every week. They're probably you know uh, people would click the first episode realize it's not real but how could they really know you know they could maybe guess but ai is pretty good yeah it, it is good and i think it's going to destroy uh cele celebrity culture entirely like no one's gonna care about idols which is good uh worship no idols other than uh that depicting the image of god that's, that's right my last statement well, Aggie, do you have anything you want to plug since uh, Rusty evidently has nothing to plug? Uh, nope. I, uh, you know, I've, I had, came back to give a little stream uh, on Valentine's Day. It didn't go so well. I was, Wait, like, it didn't go well? What do you over. mean? I mean, I think I spent at least three hours just like with my head on my desk, like wishing for a merciful end to, oh, no. to my misery. Now, was that the booze talking or were you a sober dober at that point? Well, I mean, I felt like I mean, I probably only had five or six or seven drinks. So yeah, so it might have been the booze talking, possibly. But although with that being the case, uh, I did you know <clears throat> the the mindset. My idea was uh, you know I, I took those ten weeks off of YouTube, wherever I came back a few weeks ago. That was pretty decent, and I came back on Valentine's Day. wasn't so good, and I was kind of just like, I don't know, it just. Uh, was it just that no one was you didn't get enough audience or you just weren't feeling? No, it? I mean I probably had those last two streams. I was doing like more numbers than I usually do because mm. I had been gone for so long. Maybe people were wondering what was up, but I kind of just I don't know. My my heart's just not in it, you know. Like I just I, I pretty much went live, did a few hours, and I'm like, oh, you know, I just just had that feeling. I'm like, I don't even really want to. I wasn't even really feeling it, you know. I just was yeah. like. I'm kind of my my mental mode is just switched into like uh, just working in the diamond mines and you know breathing all that good dust and just. Uh, hey, isn't it know. so much better? Uh, I I I think about this way way more. Just the more I'm outside working, just cutting fucking wood, and uh, is screwing it all together and nailing shit. I'm like, this is way more exciting and rewarding than. Being inside, sitting in front of a monitor and trying to, like, figure out how to entertain people I've never <laughs> met on the Internet. Well, I mean, I feel like I probably am healthier than I maybe was uh, prior. Uh, I, I don't know. It's sort of like I, I'm not. It, it doesn't, like, give me a sense of fulfillment to do, like, what I'm doing kind of right now. I mean, it's it has some fulfilling aspects, but, you know, but at the same time, I'm kind of like. The way that I look at it was, you know, I just, what I thought was for me, like what I thought was kind of the right thing. I felt like I was doing what fit me for a while, you know, for some, for some years. And then I'm kind of like, now I, I, now I'm not so sure, you know, mm. I just, uh, but I don't really know what exactly, uh, what is good. I mean, I, I've still been writing a lot of music still very like it's still really my my outlet and everything like that but at the same time i'm like you know i've got things here that's probably the best work that i've ever done but then i'm going back and looking at like okay well i still put out some good stuff over the last year a few singles that were still you know of an elevated quality and none of them really got you know the the reception was was not very strong so then it's kind of like well you know if i feel if i feel like it's good and i put you know a lot of time into really 
putting together a real album and I invest in this real album, which I could definitely do, but then it's like I, I put it out and it gets a, a thousand plays. I mean, is it really, is it, is it worth all that or just kind of cut the losses now and say, I'm just going to kind of, you know, go hibernation, go offline, kind of go dark on the E front. Well, if I can yeah, throw maybe. in my two cents to that, Aggie, I think now that you did get the wagey job and you're financially secure and you're doing the responsible adult thing, uh, maybe f- fuck the view count. Like, just do what is fun. And if you don't like streaming anymore, then fuck streaming. If you like making music, then just do like what you genuinely yeah, are it. passionate about. It, it is. Uh, it does. I do feel good about doing it. I enjoy it. And it definitely is as far as things that I've done in my time. It's definitely very high on uh, what does give me some fulfillment. It's just sort of to me, it's sort of like the way that I feel about it. It's not even just so much because sometimes you get conflated where uh, I'll, I'll mention it or I might mention it when I was streaming or whatever and why I felt the way I did about it. And to me, it's not like, oh, you know, this isn't even going viral type of thing. It's more of like, a, you know, do people listen to this and think it's garbage and just aren't giving me the proper kind of feedback or, you know, like that type of thing. It's, it's more like that in my mind. I'm like, you know, there's stuff that I've done that I thought was pretty good and it reflected as far as how many because with with music it's like that because with a with song if it's good people are going to return to it to listen to it more so it's like if the you if i publish something and the traffic is basically immediately stagnant uh like shortly afterwards to me mentally that signifies that it is not that that, that i'm doing something wrong here that it's not uh, there's there's just a an error being made with what I'm doing. Maybe I, so, so I want to just be sure that I'm really giving what I what I feel in my heart and soul and what I feel in my mind and what I'm putting together mentally for me. I want that to translate to what I'm producing in that department. And then so it's sort of like I just don't know. Like something isn't clicking here. Something isn't you know. I I just don't know if it's like a Hey brother, maybe I'll just maybe give you some I don't know. Advice. I could maybe su- maybe submit it to <laughs> like a second. no jumper or something. Like I just I feel like there's something missing here, and I'm not getting like the clear, clear reasoning. Maybe, but it's all good though. It's all you know. I'll I'll do what I do. Well, and, I think I heard you know. a certain brother just enter the room to give some advice if uh, if he is Man, still here. Hey, you, okay. you can't you, see. You got stuck in your head. That's where you at. Mm. But that's not where your art is at. Mm. Your art. Is where is it that's what comes from the ethos mm. so you got to interpret that however you can you are the vessel from what comes above filters through you it spills out and yeah maybe they won't like all of it but you got to trust in the message what's coming from above a <laughs> trust in that ether you know what I'm saying? Is it condescending to give genuine advice through a, a voice filter? <laughs> like, does advice sound better coming from a black man than it would from Rusty? Well, when we're talking about this real hip hop game, spitting on that on that real business. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, always do what you think is going to make you better creatively or whatever as a person explore ideas that are going to make you wiser and and yeah not everyone's going to attach to it but if you think that you're doing something you feel the passion to do it do it until you figure out everything about it uh whatever music you're you're entering into cuz like I'm I'm going through a similar thing where an album that I was planning to make last year and I had like a lot of songs already written I'm thinking about it now and I'm seeing how the world's changing and I'm going, fuck, like, fuck this. I got to rewrite all these songs. There's no way I can have this long intro or this or that. These songs have to be shorter so they, you know, are more attractive to uh, social media or whatever. And so it's like, do I rewrite all this? Do I adapt it? Whatever. Do I change the message to fit more of what I'm feeling now rather than what I felt back then, which is much less doom and gloom and severity? Um, or I, I don't know. I mean, it, who knows what to do and who knows what the reaction is, but but do it. Like, get the craziest idea in your head and follow through with it and at least complete it. Because when you complete it, it's going to be meaningful to someone because they're going to see the passion behind it. Um, 
I I hope I, I think I missed a little bit of your points because I was fucking around with a voice <laughs> transformer. Um, but yeah, who like I I don't know. I the the biggest misery I could ever imagine as an artist or a content creator or whatever is doing shit just for views and for yeah. the money. Yeah. That's like, that's fucking hell to me. That's why I stopped YouTube to switch to doing comic books is because I was like, I was looking at the videos I was making and I was like, oh shit, I got to make a video so I can still have one video every two weeks. And then you end up like Turkey Tom, no offense to him, but it's like, God damn, eventually that's got to get boring as shit. Just like making videos about like furries and random people on the internet that, that most people have no idea who it even is or cares uh, it's not really meaningful. It's just, I mean, it's just entertainment. So, I mean, I'm not hating on them for that. Cause like, well, yeah, and speaking of low view counts, um, if, if we cared about view counts, like this podcast would not exist. Is it Kino would not exist. Like all these right. things are getting like 3000 views. Like that is laughable to most, uh, YouTubers or people who do this, uh, to make money. So yeah, if, if we cared about though. that, like think about how much joy our 3,000 view podcast brings to, I assume, at least 10 of those people. Like some people really get a <laughs> kick out of listening to us every week. And if we focus on the view counts, then we wouldn't be enriching anybody's life. I, I Yeah, I, I agree. If, if I wanted to get higher views, I know what I could do, but it's not what I want to do. And, um, and that's just like fucking the same bullshit why I wanted to stop doing YouTube in the first place or not stop well, doing YouTube, but why put it on this? Like the second back burner. I do feel that, but then sort of, so that's kind of like what it's, what it is for me. I, I just have to kind of came to realize that <clears throat> what I enjoy to do is not, uh, complimentary to success, I guess, or, but right. it's not even like with the music, but yeah, as far as, you know, and I kind of could have probably said that six years ago when I was getting my first bands on streaming and stuff that, you know, <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to go as far as I wanted to go and uh, all that. But, but that's, yeah, it's just like. <sighs> so we got to find the balance. We got to find what is it that we that we do have a passion for. Imitating how... Wings of Redemption in a <laughs> lasagna video. <laughs> I've never seen Iggy more like awake and in tune. Like he, that's what he's passionate about. <laughs> I see. I would love to. Uh, I would love to get the Rusty Cage show up and probably not live. Maybe live, but I would not read the chat. And all I would do is talk about these crazy fucking uh, schizo rants and all the conspiracies <laughs> going on in my head. That would be fucking awesome. Or yeah. or just anything like that. Where it's like, I do this anyways, I might as well be doing it on a stream. But if that's not successful, then it's kind of a... I'm not going to say... Well, that's why you can make a, a, like a new channel. Like just a, a yeah. fuck off channel where you post the dumb shit that... Like, fuck, who cares? There's no risk. Nothing but reward. You're posting something that you enjoyed making and maybe somebody will enjoy watching it. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the idea is though is to find the thing that you enjoy doing that actually pulls in a shitload of money. Oh, well, well, once you start thinking that way, Rusty, you're going to get depressed all over again. <sighs> yeah, maybe you're right, but I mean, no, it's, that's not always true. I mean, I, so you don't, don't do it for the views, do it for the money. I do, I do, do it for the art first. Like, yes, always that's the point. The first. And then, and then if that doesn't work, at least you know that you created something that you're proud of and you're not just like, because money doesn't really, it's it's good to have a certain amount and it's probably really great to be rich um but it's not very fulfilling if you have like a million dollars and it's on the back of like doing shit that if you died right then they're like who the fuck is this person who gives a shit well done and nothing i guess meaningful i think maybe it's just something that i have inherently that i should try to like work out because i mean i think it's probably been i'm trying to think i want to say could have maybe even gone back to like a year and a half ago. I forget. I forget when things kind of started getting a little rocky for me. But basically, I just um, from outside, you know, because I, I was kind of in my own, you know, world with what I was doing on YouTube and merch, and I kind of, you know, was getting into a, the a, probably the biggest swing of those things that I have yet, as to, even to date. Mm -hmm. And um, I was getting a lot of criticism real life kind of like outside my bubble or you know like i had like all my online stuff but then like when i you know people would ask me like what i was doing or whatever and 
I would mention what I did online and things and how that was kind of what I did full time. I just for the first, I don't know, it was something around that time. All of a sudden people were, you know, basically telling me like, you know, right to my face that, oh, that's nothing. You know, what are you, are you, are you kidding me? You know, and it kind of <laughs> just made me a little uncomfortable. And then it was sort of just like a continuing thing because, <clears throat> yeah, when I would do music or whatever and I just, I felt like I you know, was, was doing better or that I felt like I had, was making good, I was going in a good direction, but like, I just, I wasn't getting, uh, reality was not following what I had in mind. Like you guys my vision so much in the, in the bubble of like entertaining the, uh, the online crowd. And is that what you're saying? And, and then it's like people IRL that you're talking to are kind of saying like, dude, what the fuck are you even doing right now? And then you come to a realization when you're looking at the music you want to make versus what you're doing. I what? Well, like, it was like, just like, you know, in my mind, I'm seeing this growth from where I had been and I'm seeing the growth and improvement from where I was to where, you know, I was at at that time. But people are telling me like, oh, you're, you're age and you're only doing this and you're not even this, you know, mm -hmm. wow, I'd be embarrassed to even admit that. And people are like really saying this to me like in real life, like in my face. Who and I was just kind of... people, man? That's it some... was just some stuff that I was going through at that time, like uh -huh. just, you know... Well, I had... to be fair, when people ask me, like strangers ask me what I do for a living, uh, I don't say YouTube. I fucking lie <laughs> about that shit. I say I edit videos, which I guess is technically the truth, but... Uh, yeah, I, I could see the shame of uh, confessing to people IRL what we all do online. Well, yeah, it, it, yeah, just, it was just it kind of just. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, and then you know, because I was having, like I said, relative successes, and I felt good about that. And then you know, uh, I would, I just, you know, yeah, people would at, at worst they would say those things but at best they would kind of like you know scratch their head and be like uh okay cool whatever and then just you know never speak on it again so then it's like you know i just feel i just felt very inadequate you know just like anything i was doing it just wasn't and then comparatively when i got back and was working a regular job again now it's like you know now now i get all the oh good job thumbs up handshake you know, before I got like a shameful side eye and that is like a total Dude, this is very, switch. very, very foreign to me. What you're saying is like, are you, who are, the, what are the jobs of the people? Like, what are their lives who are criticizing <laughs> you? As you're well, I mean, I don't know, like, you know, I just, money. I, I just, you know, I don't, this will probably be about as far as I get into it, but just basically people around me uh, in my area who are my age, you know, it's just they're making lots of money and having, you know, families oh. and having just and younger than me for that, for I see, that matter. I but yeah, yeah. It's just so like, like, they're, they're like, they're living like the traditional fulfilled life. You know, they, they're, a, um, maybe they own their own business and, and, you know, they're pulling in a uh, 200 K a year and they got like two kids already. And then it's like, what do you do? What do you do? Well, I drink uh half a liter of <laughs> whiskey and over the course of 10 hours, I, you know, entertain them. Yeah. And they're just not seeing it like, you know, because before that, I mean, I literally, I, I didn't, I would do literally nothing, you know, I mean, I, I worked right. for years overnights, I wouldn't speak to another person for weeks at a time, if not months at a time. And so, you know, comparatively, I, uh, I felt very good about where everything was at. And then it was just like, a, you know, I don't know, I just it I went 100 percent understand now my, my cousins are like this, like they're all lawyers. One of them is like. I think he was trying to join the FBI, which I got to look in, back into that. But last time I saw them was a few years back and, and we were catching up because we hadn't talked since we were kids. And it's like, well, what do you do? And it's like, Oh, I'm in the Academy to be an FBI agent. It's like, all right. And then what do you do? Well, I'm a, uh, a lawyer. I just joined my father's practice. What do you do? And it's like, I make YouTube videos and it's just like fucking damn that sounds lame as shit like they're all married and they have kids and shit and i'm just like oh i'm a i'm an alcoholic and <laughs> I, uh, I i play five finger fillet for edgy teenagers online it seemed cool to me but now that i'm putting it in perspective maybe not 
Well, I don't know. I think you guys are talking to some boomers because they're saying that like 60% of Zoomers, their dream job is YouTuber. So I think if you guys started, you know, hanging out That's... at some playgrounds, maybe you'll have some people <laughs> who respect you more. Dude, we're fucking done for. That's true. And that's the end of the world because everyone wants to just be an, a, a fucking TikToker or a YouTuber. Which, I mean, in terms of society, yeah, we're doomed. But in terms of us being respected, you know, maybe we're talking we're to the wrong forgotten. people. No, because we are YouTubers and that's what Zoomers respect. Aggy, stop talking to these fucking 60 year olds with a wife and kids and go talk to some children and they'll say, fuck yeah, dude, do YouTube. You know what, Aggy? You know what would get their respect? Mm. If you did something really big, something that caught a lot of people's attention and uh, and kind of put fear in there and, and also uh, maybe doubt. got you on the, the cable news. Yeah, and well, they, you, know, they said, you know what? He, I was wrong about him. <laughs> he well, was people, a uh, people, uh, you know, around me when I was in the Pepe the Frog movie back in 2018. You know, that was that was uh, something different at that time. You know, people, uh, you know, that that was me getting some recognition and some some uh, inve my invested years spending, you know, all these years online and all these formations of all these online communities and having all this encyclopedic knowledge. It was. We we recorded interviews for hours, and I, I don't I know for sure probably ninety eight percent of it didn't, never made the final cut. But we really went to like a whole encyclopedia of all these rare internet things that like nobody would have ever known. Like I was just in I was in the these group chats at the right time. I was in these servers at the right time, and this and that. And I saw things, and I was a part of things that you know people wouldn't even know about. I just was actually there was uh, yes uh, recently I think maybe a week ago I got a notification on Snapchat about it you know um, i have like three thousand people on my snapchat so it's like if so it's somebody's birthday it'll be like oh wish da, 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 happy birthday and there was a uh woman who was really a big part of the 4chan tiny chat community like maybe six years ago or whatever uh who had overdosed in like 2018 but i still had you know been friends with her on snapchat and we talked on there for like a couple years and it was like oh wish her a happy birthday and i just kind of sat there and looked at my phone for a couple minutes and i'm like damn people wouldn't even know you know there's Shit. you have so many there's there was so much that will never get its book that will never get its uh there'll never be a, a movie about this you know the it wouldn't even be a turkey tom video about it you know it's uh it was just kind of you had to be there it's yeah. lost yeah half yeah. the people that were there you know actually lit, went to live a normal life and wouldn't even remember it. half of them got twisted up in some other bs and maybe they might not be with us anymore today and it's just like you know but I, and i'm here and i was there and it's just like i don't know yeah it's i mean we all we all want to be um napoleon or caesar or someone whose name is uh remembered for millennia and engraved in statues and in stone and whatnot um but we won't be I mean, it, we we got our local or, or current ones, you know. Well, in the future, if they're reading through like FBI files of what was on school <laughs> shooters' phones, you'll be remembered in the history books, Rusty. I, well, it, it, yeah. I, well, I was like, I was on TikTok. I I keep going on TikTok because it's so fucking addicting. But there is there is like people. I guess like the knife game song is kind of coming back, where people are like, "Ooh, do you remember playing this when you were?" Uh, in middle school or fucking whatever and there was a a guy on there who's like I'm just gonna let all you uh, you know Gen Zers know like this song has been around since long before you were born oh, we God. sang this song in the 80s and I was like what the fuck you I motherfucker I was like what kind of erased me from history motherfucker I wrote that myself I remember <laughs> writing it that's uh, why I'm almost glad that that's not the type of art that I make because I would be so <laughs> furious if people erased like my authorship. Like if somebody yeah. re-uploads my video, they can't change my voice. You know. Well, it's better. That guy, that guy, he's an AI generated voice started in 1920. That monkey character <laughs> yeah. is from ancient Egypt. It's like fucking Christ. So a I monkey mean, monkey from Egypt, huh? We're all gonna be written out of history eventually, and and that's fine. Well, yeah, so when the sun explodes and destroys again. the entire solar system, sure. Like, fuck it, who cares? I mean, here's the real truth: we are living in assimilation, and uh, and our only purpose here in life is to mm. experience things and to learn knowledge, so we can upload it to a central database 
Oh, which good. Becomes smarter because we're all just nodes, little neurons in a giant brain. But I figured it was a there's an alien species that cannot experience emotions, so they created humanity, a species that can feel emotions, so that they can experience them through us. Oh God! Well, they definitely created my girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> and with with that. Uh, should we wrap this one up? This is over two yeah. hours long. So welcome, I'm not even going to split it into two episodes. Fuck it. You guys get a long one today. Thanks for listening, though, for real, if anyone actually makes it to this point. Uh, I think uh, it might take a few clicks, but people will probably finish this all the way through. Sweet. Uh, Eggy, well, you have any final guys. thoughts? Uh, everybody out there, just uh, be the best you can, stay strong, and, uh, you know, as long as you uh, get up and do some jumping jacks tomorrow, you know, what? we continue pushing with those things, for real, for real, no cap. And if you live in Ohio, uh, trade out the COVID mask for a gas mask. You'll probably, that'll probably help you a lot more uh, healthily. Uh, everyone in Ohio should collectively be storing their piss and mm. filtering out all the toxins before they start drinking any more water and then trading it to other people. So you have an infinite water supply that can just keep going through people's systems. And speaking um, of piss, I've had to piss for the last hour of this yeah, podcast. So yeah, yeah, yeah. bye everybody. It's been fun. <laughs> See ya. Oh, peace.